track one basically deals with climate risk management. And then track two is about um, the development indicators. Uh, so TAM shows how these are clearly linked um, and it enables projects, for example, like ours, to clearly um, track how we are supporting um, the use of climate information uh, in planning, in budgeting, uh, and to inform decisions on action at local and household level. Um, yeah, and then how, how, how that influences development. So one is to be able to actually um, track progress towards our objectives. So, you know, track essentially how um, the project interventions are actually contributing towards building um, the communities, I would call it resilience and adaptive capacity mm -hmm. to the challenges that they're experiencing, you know, from climate change, but then other challenges as well, eh? development challenges, for example. Um, and beyond the tracking uh, of the progress, it's also to enable us to be accountable so to the communities that we are working with, to the government, but then also to the donor. Um, and then I think learning is also a key uh, purpose uh, for monitoring uh, because as we uh, implement the interventions, and you know, draw on results. Monitoring should enable us to actually take time to reflect on you know, what these results mean uh, to the lives of the people whom we want to impact, so that's the communities directly, um, to the government in terms of you know, how are we informing, uh, let's say, development planning, as well as policy review. At the moment, since Kenya is in a transition period, uh, with the new constitution and evolved governance system. Uh, a lot of uh, the laws and the policies are being reviewed at national level, especially the ones that touch on natural resource management. Um, and com our communities, the communities we target really uh, highly depend on natural resources. So whatever policy review is done and legislation and then supports you know, implementation of these policies, has potentially a direct you know, impact on how the communities can actually you know, continue to do their life, engage with their livelihood activities. Uh, so we would like to you know, ensure that as much as possible, uh, the community's interests of their priorities yeah, are reflected in, in, in the way that uh, the policies are reviewed and le legislation is also developed and then enforced. The communities we work with are already seeing uh, changes in the weather pattern uh, and of course the climate projections also say that um, uh, what is already being witnessed is likely to intensify, uh, likely to change in certain ways as well and so by using, um, uh, you know, assessing uh, perhaps how the institutions, the policies at uh, national and perhaps county level, uh, taking into account climate uh, information and perhaps incorporating or, or amending, adjusting the development plans and you know, budgeting for it according, uh, accordingly, uh, should ensure that interventions that are implemented uh, you know, at the local levels, at the county level and sub-county, would support development, uh, which would be beneficial to the communities, but then again, um, perhaps climate smart, uh, the development interventions as well, especially infrastructure type investments, and that all this will now, you know, collectively contribute to better livelihoods for the community members. So for me, it's the track one and track two, and you know, the link uh, how they link and the, the feedback loop. Um, yeah, and then I think TAM as well helps to 
would I say, systematize <laughs> in, you know, information. Eh? Uh, because in monitoring, you get, we gather a lot of different sets of information and data. Um, and, you know, TAM helps, the, 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 the framework helps us to, to organize that information uh, perhaps much more clearly than other frameworks that I have come across previously.